I know you're gonna dig this. Ladies and gentlemen, and once again, welcome to the Funk Chronicles. I'm your host, Dr. Turk Logan, from Logan Communications and the Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center. And today, you know, I've said it once and I'll say it over and over again how special our guests are. We have a very, very special guest, and we were just talking, and and and, and I can see a little Diana Ross, the former mayor of Dayton, Ohio, <laughs> Miss Ryan McLean. Ryan, how you doing? I am doing well, Dr. Logan. It's such a pleasure to be here, and uh, I can't thank my cousin, David, for uh, encouraging me to, to do this. And when you start thinking about music, and even the Funk Hall of Fame, but we go back in my family with my dad and my granddaddy to what they used to have called the Farmdale. I remember. Which was down in Hogbottom, which is now Madden Hills and Dunbar <laughs> High School. How things change. I How remember. things change. And I always, I like to always tell the story because my daddy loved the story. And that was the one about Ray Charles and okay. that, um, Ray Charles had just finished performing, was late at night down in, uh, at the Farmdale in Hogbottom. And I guess they might have had uh, some brew or something right, like that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my dad let Ray Charles drive. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and so the story goes that uh, when my father was ill and Ray Charles was playing at the Ohio State Fair. Right. And he wanted to see Ray. And so he told him, Tell him the man who taught him how to drive is here to see him. And he immediately knew it was C.J. Sure. McLean. And, I, and, and, and so to tell you about how, I, how long I've been around music I know. is uh, unbelievable. And you start thinking about funk, you know. Yeah. And how did it get that name? Where did it come from? And, and, and you know, back in the 60s, it's all part of that revolutionary sure. genre that we have that uh, we, we talked about rock and roll. And, right. but that, we had to have our own culture, uh, uh, our own genre. Yes, Because we did. like you said, pop music, R&B. You know, yeah, uh, country western good. blues. Yeah. So, so exactly, yeah, exactly. and so you, you, when you think about the 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 funk fast factor, when you thought about rock and roll back in then, you thought about Elvis Presley, and that was the rock and roll. Sure. But so so as you just stated, we always created our own uh, genre. And I think about when I was in high school, we have all these great talent shows and. And, and the bands that we had there, the, the Imperials. Right. Uh, Majestics. The, but, oh, my God, Majestics yeah. and uh, Little Woo Woo, you know? A little Woo Woo. Uh, Bobby Wilson. That's right. Um, and then you have, and then we got sophisticated with the Ohio Players and Roger, Sun, and Heatwave, Dayton, Lakeside, and, yeah. uh, Heat, Sl oh, Heatwave, uh, yeah. So, so, Fa yes, Faiso. So, so then we develop our own genre, and and the thing that's so exciting about, uh, I like to see this in Dayton really take off, like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and things right, right, like right, that right. in Cleveland, is the fact that Dayton is one of those strange cities. And I can say that. And you would know. I'm a, yeah. I'm a native Daytonian. Yeah, and, and, and the first black female mayor. And, 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 and the other thing is this, is that you can go to California and talk about the Ohio players and they're reverend. You can go to London, England and talk about the Ohio players. Or, and or, or Lakeside. Uh, and any one of the groups. And they're reverend. You come to Dayton, it's like, uh. Yeah. And, but, but, but it's not only us that that's happened to. They even did it to the Wright brothers after they had. Well, had, you know the history as well as anybody else because you had these two geniuses back then 
that had this idea to fly a plane. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? And, and, and New York celebrated them when they came back from France. And uh, it was two days later after the ticker tape parade in New York that Dayton acknowledged it. Yeah, and, and when they celebrated their 103rd anniversary <laughs> here in Dayton, Ohio, it was like a brick just falling in the water, just went straight down. Nobody really got into the, and I had just said in the previous show, there's nowhere in the world you can go and look up in the air and can't see an airplane flying somewhere other than a bird. And it's a result of these two guys from William Street and <laughs> Third Street where the bicycle shop is. You know, it's just amazing how what this city has brought to the table over the years and what they've gotten from it. And we want to make sure, and, and, and that's why you're so important, that um, that doesn't happen to the Funk Center. We want to make sure it doesn't fall through the cracks and that major piece of history just like we talked about. What a lot of people don't know is when I was accepted into graduate school, Union Institute and University in Cincinnati, I needed three letters of recommendation. And you were one of the letters. I still have the letter that you wrote. <laughs> and you helped me get into my doctoral program at the Union Institute. And I'll never forget that. You just did it. It was just natural. I, all I had to do was ask you, sure. da, 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 da. you wrote it, gave it to me, and I said, oh, I like the mayor of Dayton, Ohio. Well, what, well, he's in, you know. And so you have been so active. I have your dad's book that you wrote. I was at one of the um, programs in West Dayton, Ohio, myself and Dr. Thomas, uh, when you talked about the book. Um, what is one of the chapters in the book that you, that, that, that you highlighted? Because you have such a history uh, in his footsteps, and he was such a great man for the state of Ohio, and then you came in to and just, you know, never missed a beat. I, I think that the most important thing that comes out of that book, and, and just a little correction, is that uh, he told that to Minnie Fells Johnson. Okay. And I wrote a chapter, but he told it to Minnie Fells Johnson. And after he, he died before the book was completed, and okay. so we filled it in with different people doing okay. things. But the, the most important thing that came out of that book was that <clears throat> people need to be unified for a cause. Right. And, and he was very, very animate about unifying people around a cause that will benefit them, not him, them. I and I think we need to really get back to the basis of unifying. And this is why uh, th this funk is so exciting because music brings all kinds of people together. Trust me. You know, it, it's one of the universal languages right. besides love. Right. It's uh, music. And, uh, and I think that we have a golden opportunity here. We just got to believe we can do it. And be consistent with letting people know about it because you know, I talk about a little bit of my history being involved in it. And in 1971, um, when we would play uh, the Godfather's music, make it funky, you know, <laughs> Bud Crow, whose hearing was le leaving him at the time, thought he was hearing the other word. And he would literally walk in the studio with your microphone on and say, what did you just say, man, young man? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, F-U-N-K, okay? And we had to go over that with the powers that be at WDAO over and over and over again to make sure that they understood that this culture was coming in and it wasn't going anywhere. Just like hip hop. Just like you just know, like everybody hip -hop. everybody thought hip hop was going to come and go. And go. But it wasn't. Exactly. And, and, and 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 but they don't understand the evolution of music and, and how we get to where we are. We have we talk about poetry slams, but it goes back to like Paul Arns Dunbar and Phyllis Wheatley. Exactly. They, they did poems, they just didn't Put a beat to it. That's right. But so I and mean, he could have put a beat to a lot of them, their poems back then, and and it would have been rap. And music. they had absolutely, and 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 they had rhythm. They right. that the the po poetry was rhythmatic, right. and so nothing nothing new under the sun. Right. And, and so what we're doing now is just talking about a, a genre that gives us something, some type of history to to attach ourselves to. Right. Because it seems like almost every form of music that we've ever developed has slowly been or somebody else has taken it and made something uh, out of they it. They have you know. adopted it. Exactly. exactly. They have adopted right, right. it. And, and 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 I've seen that happen over the last almost fifty years now in this business. And it's so frustrating to 
be sitting and, and, and watching television or at a mm -hmm. concert and hear a song you know somebody else did. And, that, and the people out in the audience say, they don't have a clue. And I'm like, well, that song came from somebody that, from Dayton, Ohio, and, you know, just like Johnny Wilder Jr. Uh -huh. and Always and Forever. Uh, I mean, that, that is just a classic. Exactly. It's a classic. It will, it, it, it will always be there. And, right. But you think about it. They had to go to England, London, England, do a Europe trip tour before they were recognized here in the States. That's exactly right. Oh, hey, let me tell you the, 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 the story. I was in London in 1977 for the CBS Record Convention, and they were getting ready to sign Heat Wave. So Johnny was there, and I was there for six days. And it was just so exciting because before I went to London, I was at a dance here in Dayton, Ohio, and Johnny walked up to me and gave me the Too Hot to Handle album. Very humble, very polite, and said, you know, when you get home, give a listen to it. You know, and I'm like, I took it home, put it on the turntable, I said, man, took it back to the radio station, and just fell in love with it. But in London, England, CBS Records had, didn't have a clue. What and they had. What they had. And so when they signed them, and in, in, in shortly after 77, they repackaged the album and sent it back to me again at WDL, and I had been playing it for a year and a half. <laughs> you know, the original, which I still have today. And, and, and it had such an impact nationally and globally you know, with their music, and still today, people play their music, oh. and it came right out of Dayton, Ohio. C came right out of Dayton, Ohio, and it's just like the Ohio players. I mean, I can I can remember going to their house and and um, Satchel's house and, yeah. and 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 just right think, over by Colonel White, right over by Overall Marathon. That's right. So it, you know the, the what, and, and our people have always. They've springboard from here, but they've always had to go somewhere else to get recognition. And, and, and that's, that's sad within itself. We owe them. Sure we, we do. We owe them, the pioneers of the funk movement. We owe them this. It was so frustrating back in the 70s to see things happen for people that had made recognition, the Wright brothers, the Pattersons, the Meads, and some of these people that are great from Dayton, Ohio, but nobody recognized any of the great musicians, you know. And I had indicated to one of your colleagues, um, Mayor James McGee, and I said, uh, Mayor, uh, you may want to get some catastrophic insurance for the city of Dayton, and he looked at me like, huh? He said, why? I said, because there are many black artists out there that are millionaires. If something ever happened to um, one of them and it was the city's fault, you wouldn't be able to afford it because it would be way over your head. Johnny Wilder had that accident in 1979, and you know the rest of that's history. And so they just never seemed to grasp. And I think now with uh, a couple of my fraternity brothers on the city commission that hopefully we've been, David just went, before the Dayton City Commission with the mayor, um, Nan Whaley, and uh, the city commissioners, and made a presentation. He's got pictures of that. And we just need to keep putting that in front of them over and over and over again, that this is a major piece of history for Dayton, Ohio. And please don't drop the ball with this, because I want to see my grandkids and my great-grandkids at some point in time when I'm no longer around come into Dayton, Ohio, go into the, the the funk museum at the time and say, hey, this is what's going on. And that's how it's done, you know, because, you know, there's not a place in in the world that somebody's not talking about the Wright brothers. And I mean, every day they're doing some kind of bio on the Wright brothers and their biplane, you know. And today, it came right out of Dayton, Ohio. So we want that same thing. And so that's why you're so important, because we know that you have been a major supporter, a major advocate of music in general, the funk music, the artists, you know them personally, the personal friends of yours, the personal friends of mine, and, and, and it's gone for almost 50 years now. And it's time. Yeah. It's, it, it's time. And, and I think I, I really like the fact that you, I read one of the, the, uh, the Funk Chronicles. Right. And the newsletter. Right. 
And that's important because I was just reading about the lady. I think her name is Ruby. Right. And and uh, women. It talks about the role of women right. in the funk movement. And you know, and you think of uh, the Shaka Khans and all of them. But but the fact is, there's a lot always, always. There's the unsung heroes and sheroes that that the funk music stands on their shoulders sure. to be what it is today. And it's not going away, and uh, they can ver they can put it in variations. Right. But the core funk is going to be there, and and I think it is the time. And I think Dayton needs to recognize that it has his history. I live great history. Great history. I live three blocks down from the Paul Lawrence Dunbar's house. Exactly. And you know, and in my in my yard, I have a uh, traffic signal, and that's a tribute to Garrett Morgan, who invented the traffic light right. for, out of Cleveland. Sure. So, so the fact is, there's so much history around here. Right. And and we just we don't know it. When I was at uh, WDAO, and I started in the early days. We used to do a broadcast that, that I'm sure you remember from the, the Tahiti Hut. Rose oh, Dillon my goodness. Uh, Muggs McGinnis? Muggs McGinnis. All right. I never had the opportunity to go to the broadcast because I was always at the radio station. But there was a lady there that was a waitress, and her name was Margie. And they used to call her Legs because she had a great pair of legs. And you would talk about, here comes Legs. There I would hear Johnny Day, Nick Powers, Biggie B.C., some of the guys. About a week ago, I'm at the gas station, and this little 77-year-old lady walked up to me. She says, Turk, I see your show on cable television, Channel 6, Time Warner, and I really like the Funk Chronicles. She said, you know, I'm 77 years old. <laughs> and it was her. And she still have her legs? Yeah, well, she has shorts on, you know. And I just kind of just, you know, it was just so natural to see something that happened over 40 years ago and come to fruition today like we're talking about with the artists because it's not about Turk Logan it's about the artists and it's about the, their their contribution to the music business and many of them because like I said people don't know that it wasn't as simple back in the sand you know because you know that history of taking the Ohio players or Junie Morrison or Slave or Son and putting their record on it it wasn't that simple oh, no. because the, the powers that be would say, one, they don't have record deals. Two, they don't, they're not on Billboard. They're not showing up on Billboard. So why in the world would we want to play them? Because we're a big radio station. We play big hits. We played the Supremes, Diana Ross, and, or, and, and, and the Temptations. Why do you want to play these, these, these nobodies? I said, there's something here that, that I see that has the potential to be catastrophic. And then they still kind of sit back and with the big question mark, yeah, right. Well, all right, go ahead. It's a good community service. And a year later, once the Ohio players came out with fire and Sweet Sticky Thing and Roger came out with more bounce to the ounce and Heat Wave came out with Always and Forever and the record label starts spending thousands of dollars to promote their artists at WDAO and the ratings just shot through the sky, we got the powers that be attention. And then it was just second nature. You know, it was, it was, it, but it, on the front end, it wasn't that simple. And, it, but, it, it was a risk taker. I had to be a risk taker. And you see, whereas today, exactly. a lot of the artists now are releasing their music. I mean, it just goes to show you how history repeats itself. Yeah. You know, what happened with our artists back then, they, had, they, they didn't have any choice. Right. Okay, the artists nowadays are choosing to go YouTube, other ways of yeah, getting their Pandora, music. Yeah, Pandora, you know, I own a, a, a little internet radio station. We have 40,000 listeners, and, 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 and it's growing every day. So that type of technology is there as well. And so we didn't have that back in those no, days. You know, you know, we had the record player, you carried the record player, and you, and you would hope that the disc jockey would promote the music, and then if the music was promoted, then somebody would say, I want, you know, we had the B&D record shop where right. you could go and buy the music, and, and they, would ha they would carry our music. Right. Yeah, and, 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 and so we've come a long ways when it comes to being able to get our music out, but one of the things, when I go back to the unsung heroes and sheroes, like the Ohio Players, like uh, Zap, and, and all of them, they learned they didn't have the opportunities that the young artists have no, today didn't. to learn the business. Right. 
that there's more to it than just singing That's right. and, and performing. And I think that uh, if nothing else, they learn from those folks what not to do today. Well, it's called show business. Business. Show business. Business. And you're right. Many of them wanted to be in the show part and didn't know the business and were taking advantage totally of it. Totally taking to advantage. Totally taking advantage. Because they didn't know the business. Know and that's where the educational piece comes in as it relates to the Funk Center because we want to be able to train and teach young people the understanding. There's a book called This Business of Music. It's about 2,000 pages, okay? It has contracts, it has breakdowns of everything in it, and I highly recommend that if you're gonna get into this business, that you pick up a copy, you can get it um, Amazon or whatever, and pick up a copy of it and read it so you understand the business part, and when you get into that contract, because a lot of people don't know, and, and, and this is how they, 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 they kill themselves, you sign a contract with a record label. The contract, has a self-renewal clause that you don't read about. You're unhappy with the record label, okay? You walk out of the contract before the contract comes to renew itself, but you still have the contract because it's renewed itself. So you can't go to another record company. So you, you're out there in limbo for four or five years, and when that contract expires, your group is 20 years old, and you're not well, the and, same. And, you know, and that was the brilliance of Prince. He changed his name. That's right. And, 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 you know, folks may not have understood that, but that was a business move. That was a good move. It was a, it was a business move. And, and I think that, um, you know, just like so many folks don't realize how many jobs go with this. Exactly. You know, you, you can have entertainment attorney. Uh, you know, you, you want to go to law school? Be Marketing. In, market, oh, oh, my goodness. And, and then editing on writing songs because right. the songwriters are really the, the folks that make the money. Right. And I think, I always laughed about how Dolly Parton always smiled every time uh, Whitney Houston sang, I always love you. Yeah, because <laughs> she, she goes to the bank. Whitney yeah. Houston don't go to the bank, no, Dolly, no. Dolly Parton goes to the bank. Dolly Parton goes and, and, and to talk about uh, the, the folks that make the sound in the background, the people who tune the instruments or make the instruments. Right. Th those are all jobs, jobs. related. And it's all going to be tied into the Funk Center as well because... Yes, and I think that's so... And I really, Dr. Logan, I think it's important that our young people also understand right. that being, being the front, right. if you, there's a bunch of folks behind you to get you to the front. That's exactly right. You know, who makes the costumes, who choreographies your, yeah. your moves. I your, mean, there's so much, and everybody needs to understand... The, the the business angle and when we talk about show business you I mean look at little Richard he's still been trying to fight to get to his many of them are trying to fight to get their royal including some of the Dayton groups yes. get their royalties from you know I looked at the numbers uh, when Marshall Jones was living here uh, I looked at the numbers that they are, were owed for royalties and plagiarism and they're staggering I oh, yes. mean, just because they had so many big hits and whatnot, but they didn't have the proper people in place to handle the business of the show business. And so consequently, you know, they may recover some of them and they may not, or maybe some of the grandkids will. But, but as long as folks learn from their, their mistakes that, uh, and, and that's what it is, the shoulders of our forefathers to allow us to leap to this, uh, era. Right. And I think, I want to go back to, you know, it, it takes people like you and David that, and other folks named and unnamed right. that have that passion right. to make it happen. It's not going to happen overnight. And, and that's no, where, not. and that is where it is good. This means of what the newsletters and things like this, the show, you got to keep it alive. Keep it keep, out there in, in Keep front. it pushing. Keep it pushing. And you know, repetition, it's the key, you know, you gotta keep repeating it, can repeating it, and then somebody else will hear it for the first time, even though you done said it a thousand times. Right. There's someone that will hear it for the first time and go, ah, ah, okay? And, and so you're gonna get more recruits as this comes on and as it grows. And then of course, once it happens, everybody will take credit oh, for it. Exactly, uh, <laughs> well, you know, one beautiful thing, and as you know, cause you, you I, I, I talked to you about it, back in the uh, early 80s, 
and segueing on to when I went to Central State, I took a position on um, music with blatant sex, drugs, and profanity. I just, as a programmer, I just felt that we weren't going to put that kind of music in our kids, and I'm still, I'm still like that today. But one beautiful thing out of all 15 groups that came out of Dayton, Ohio, I got a call from Reverend Jackson, and he complained about the, the covers of the Ohio players. I said, that has nothing to do with the music, Reverend. <laughs> the music is beautiful. So whatever you deal with the covers, that's, that's too bad. That's the way they're marketing it. But it's the music that, that, that we need to be concerned about. Not one time did I have to tell one of the artists, including Roger, when he went out to work with Tupac and, and, and Dr. Dre, Hey man, you, you know what the position is. The position doesn't change for anybody. And then they did California Love, which is still selling today, which is a beautiful song. And so, and that was a good thing because many artists, um, just to, and, and in closing, we, we, we have to um, only have a few minutes left, but to give you an example, one artist that you're aware of came out with a song called Fight the Power. Big artist, As a matter of fact, we're gonna, have, we're gonna have him on the show. Oh, and he doesn't know that when they sent the 45 out to power, there were two words in there, BS going down, that, that I said, well, I can't play this. And I sent it back to the record label. I literally sent it back to the record label. I said, look, you know, first of all, it's against the law. <laughs> you know, I got to protect the license of the radio station. And they edited it. And it was me the one that had that when you get to that part, it goes boop, you know, from that perspective. But And just think what um, the music of today, um, I don't have a television. I always tell people I don't Is have. Is that a, right? Okay. I have an, and and um, but I get my news and I keep my information. I sure, read sure. and do all of that. I'm sure you do. Yeah. And and I and everyone when I go on vacation. Uh, television is one of my activities. So I'll look at it. Okay. And I'm looking. I'm saying, oh, I'm not missing anything. All this language. I remember where, where your decorum and your speech was so important. All these cuss words on TV and the music. And, and I'm like, oh, I'm glad I don't have a TV. And we know words have consequences because a, a man just stuck his foot in his mouth by saying something about a certain culture of people. And you see the backlash on that. So we know words have consequences. We words wanna, are powerful. Words are powerful. We want to encourage the audience to make a donation to the Funk Center. And our web address is www.daytonfunkhall.com. And we want to encourage um, people that are watching the show. Leave us with you a, a brief comment about where you want to see us go with this and, and how important this is as we're closing out. And remember to, to, to remind folks that it is a nonprofit organization, exactly so their right. donations can be tax, tax exempt, tax, tax deductible, and that's very important it nowadays. Is. It is. So I just wanted to throw that in there that's to make important. sure. I'm glad you did because I know you would piggyback because you know that's my point. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have been truly honored to have a dear friend, a former mayor of Dayton, the first black female mayor of Dayton, Ohio, uh, Ms. Ryan McLean, who is a legend within herself, whose family is legendary, and it, it is such an honor to have you on the show, and you do look like Diana Ross. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. And thank you for joining us. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been watching The Funk Chronicles with yours truly, Dr. Turk Logan from Logan Communication and the Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center. I've enjoyed the time I've spent with you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.